Okay, welcome back to this week in Penn State football. Greg, it's been, we had a little hiatus. I missed you. I hope your Super Bowl betting went well. Went okay. All right, we'll just leave it at that. (laughs) I'm not going to ask for any exact figures. Let's talk. It's actually this week in Penn State recruiting more than this week in Penn State football because we've got to talk about the second, the other signing day. A couple years ago, this this was like Christmas Eve for Penn State fans, but now with the early signing period, this isn't an afterthought, but a lot of the hay is in the barn. Right. Having said that, uh, it was a very productive weekend for James Franklin in Penn State. James, I believe, turned 47 over the weekend. That's right, yes. And he got a couple of nice presents. Uh, can you talk about the guys that have uh, joined, I guess, the 2019 class or ex- are expected to join? And also, they're still in play for a couple other uh, names. Right. Yeah, so we'll start with the, we'll get to the 2019. We'll start okay. with the commits, the 2020 and the 2021. So Curtis Jacob, a linebacker, four-star uh, Josh Moten, a four-star corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moten's from the Maryland, D.C. area. Uh, Curtis Jacobs is a guy that Penn State's been targeting for a really long time. Is sort of, I don't know if it's fair to call him like the next in line for Brandon Smith and Micah Parsons and Lance Dixon, but that's <laughs> kind of the idea here right. uh, with him and uh, Derek Wingo, the, the Florida linebacker that committed a while ago to the 2020 class. So they doubled their class size in the junior ranks to four. Um, which gives them not quite as the most commits in the country for that class. But the 2021 class, they're one of 13 schools nationally to have a sophomore committed. Uh, Dante Thornton, a uh, mm-hmm. receiver, they have to be rated. Uh, pick them on Saturday during an unofficial visit to campus. So they're off and running in 2021. The 2020 class is up to four, Bob. And we haven't even finished the 2019 class yet, which we'll finish up on Wednesday. That is crazy. And just to, uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, because I didn't really reference it, is do you have any kind of update or any kind of indicator maybe regarding a certain wide receiver who's a five-star from Southern Columbia? Anything going on with him in Penn State? I think he had a visit. Yes. Where, how, do you, how do you think the relationship is going uh, as they continue to pursue uh, Julian Fleming. Yeah, I think it's off the charts at this point. He's been the campus, you know, I'm starting to, you're going to need more fingers, hand, you know, toes and everything else to keep track of his number of visits to campus. I mean, uh, his girlfriend attends there, so he goes up to see her quite a bit. And when he's there, he pops over to the football building. So Why he was not? in town. On, yeah, certainly. So he was in town on Saturday, uh, check things out over the weekend. So they're in a good place with him, Bob. It's, it's going to be shocking uh, at this point if they would lose him. I mean, it just is. I know there's some really talented coaches in schools, Michigan, Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, all coming after him, but everything points Penn State's way at this point. That is great news. I think he is absolutely a must-get for James Franklin. I mean, they didn't do a lot, I think, with Pennsylvania in this this current uh, recruiting class in terms of, but he didn't really feel like it was a great year for uh, Pennsylvania kids. Having said that, when Micah was available, he got him. Uh, Mullen Miles Sanders was available. He Jahan got him. Dotson. Jahan Dotson. So I think, but this 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 is a guy that if you're gonna if you're gonna try and dominate the state, you're gonna try and keep pace with some of the schools they're competing against. You can't let him go to another program. So hopefully, yeah, they can kind of finish off uh, Julian's uh, recruitment. But also, let's just talk a little bit about uh, the signing day that's coming up. Yeah. Um, what do you like about it? And who is still maybe in play? for Penn State for this class. Yeah, so we got two guys who will sign that did not sign in December. That's defensive end Smith Vilbert, defensive end Joseph Darkwa, James Franklin's first right. European committee from mm. Germany. Mm-hmm. So those Fertile two, recruiting ground, Germany. Yeah, it is. Excuse me. So those two guys will sign. Bob, uh, Devon Ellis committed to Penn State in January but signed in December, so he's done with. He's in and good to go. Mm-hmm. At this point, a couple things. You mentioned Pennsylvania in 2019 recruiting. Penn State offered Daquan Hardy uh, mm-hmm. from Penn Hills, the corner, on uh, on Tuesday. Very likely will be a late addition to this class, so I think they sit in good shape there. Lake City, Florida receiver T.J. Jones, same story. I think they'll get him. He announces at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we'll see what Nick Cross does. Maryland four-star safety. Is he going to flip from Florida State to Penn State? Is he going to flip from Florida State to Georgia? Or is he going to stick with the Seminoles? We'll have to wait and see. A couple other names out there. Doug Nestor, the Ohio State commit, now trending towards Virginia Tech, according to 247 Sports. So, Bit of a shock there, I think, but doesn't look like Penn State will end up with him. Dewan Jones, the massive offensive lineman, I think is going to go elsewhere. That kind of leaves not too much left on the board. Jaquay Sorrell is really the only other one. The Florida uh, defensive tackle. He's going to make his announcement, or at least he's planning to make his announcement after James Franklin begins his news conference on Wednesday in State College. You can read into that what you want. Maybe Penn State will wait and get a 
late commitment like they did with Tariq Castro Fields a couple of years ago. Ellis Brooks is in the same boat, but uh, I guess that's a long way of saying some good news for Penn State. Maybe not as, as great a news as they would have hoped maybe a week and a half ago, but it'll still be a good end to this class. I just want to know how come you didn't lobby the bosses to attend maybe a recruiting camp in Germany to check yeah. this kid out? Because there's a lot of fun things to do in Germany, a lot of things that you might like to do in Germany, <laughs> but yet you didn't get a good up-close look at this kid. Uh, in future years, as James Franklin continues to expand his recruiting footprint, footprint maybe to France, yeah. Australia. We'll have to think about tra- well, Las Vegas. That, that Daniel Pascarello was from Australia, so we're already one are you for gonna, one there. Are you going to lobby? Uh, the bosses to maybe get a, a closer look? I think we'll have to do that. I don't think you're that great of a flyer, I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> that is but anyway, we're going to have plenty to talk about after signing day, which is obviously Wednesday. Uh, James Franklin's going to have an availability. Mm-hmm. We're going to meet the new Penn State receivers coach, I believe, Jared Parker. Yep. Well, that'll be fun. And then we'll have some videos and some stories coming out of that. And guess what, guys? Before you know it, it'll be time to put the pads on for Penn State spring practice. That's it for this week in Penn State football.